The storm could not have come at a worse time for hospitals in Louisiana, with ICUs already overwhelmed with patients from the latest COVID surge. New Orleans is completely without power this morning, making an already tough situation even more difficult for doctors, nurses, and patients. We're joined now by Dr. Mark Klein, physician in chief at Children's Hospital in New Orleans. Dr. Klein, good morning. Good morning. C can you bring us up to date on exactly what the situation is at your hospital? Well, we had a rough day. Um, we have a considerable amount of damage to the hospital itself, including to our uh, brand new building, which is a $300 million building oh that God. literally opened. Go, go two days uh, before the hurricane's landfall. Uh, we, we've had intrusion of water onto the ground floor, several inches of water into our chapel, which has not even been used at this point. Also um, water through the roof. Uh, we have issues with uh, electricity, of course, no electricity. So we're on emergency generation and have been on that emergency power for a little more than 12 hours. Um, the good news is that all of our patients stayed safe. Uh, we we uh, were locked down from about six o'clock yesterday morning on. We're still locked down. So we've got a lot of staff that are in the hospital, either uh, literally not sleeping at all or sleeping on air mattresses. And they did a great job taking care of the patients and all of the patients are safe. But uh, going forward, we're very concerned about the power situation. We're concerned about clean water and um, we have a substantial number of critically ill children in the hospital and we're making contingency plans for uh, potentially transferring them to a children's hospital in another state if necessary. You've been operating on backup generators thus far. When, when do you expect to get full power back? Are you like everyone else? Well, all we've been told is that the power grid failure in New Orleans was cataclysmic and that uh, we can expect to be without power for a week or more. Um, our, our sense is that there really isn't a timetable for restoration of power. We currently have uh, fuel for emergency generation uh, to last about another four days. Uh, and we don't know what our ability will be to get additional fuel in given the situations with the roads. Without power, you don't get clean water in. You don't have uh, sufficient sewerage out. Um, I'm, I'm just curious, is there an evacuation plan that you are looking at moving forward past those four, four days? Yes, yeah, so, so we began the contingency planning and scenario planning around that last night. We did most of that uh, overnight. And uh, we'll be placing some calls to um, a couple of other children's hospitals today. You know, fewer than 5% of all the hospitals nationally are children's hospitals. So we don't have the luxury of being able to transfer patients to just any hospital because we really take care of the sickest of the sick children with very complex medical problems. And so it would have to be a facility that has capabilities that are similar to ours. And we cover a broad swath of the Gulf South. We're very proud of the fact that we're standing in the gap for children across Louisiana and the, and the central Gulf South. And, uh, and if, if we're put in a position of having to do that, it, it will be a, a significant problem for children and families across a, a several hundred mile swath of this part of the country. Yeah, so much of your staff has endured so much uh, in terms of their mental, emotional health. We send them our best. Dr. Mark Klein, thank you and thank you for all that you do.